and welcome to the past paper questions one on algorithms. These are the questions that come up on the Edexcel Decision 1 Maths A-Level course, although these are, are very applicable to most other Decision Maths modules. Uh, for more help with your math studies, do look at my YouTube channel at Hegarty Maths and MrHegartyMaths.com. Now, you should have already done tutorial one on algorithms, made some notes, understood the basics and worked through some of the book on the questions I suggested. Now I'm going to do um, a couple of past paper questions that have come up between January 2007 and June uh, and January 2012 on the um, algorithms. Okay, so specifically on tutorial one. They tend to, uh, as I've seen, come up in regards to flowcharts. So, how I suggest you do this? You have a look at the question, uh, which I'll show you. Maybe you find it on a copy, on a hard copy you've got at home, or you print it out. You attempt the question, and then um, pause the video, and then I will go through the answers, and you can mark off your work. Okay. And just a warning with this one, I'll show you the question um, uh, that you can see, and I'll also show you the printed answer booklet where you're supposed to write your answer down, so you sh so you can see how your answer is supposed to be written. So five seconds on the question, which you, you should pause and work through. And five seconds on the answer booklet, this is how you should write your answer down in this table. And I'll go back to the question, and in a further five seconds, I'll start working through the answers. So pause the video. Okay, we've got an algorithm. Um, we are told to do various steps. It's quite a long one, and it says for uh, the first part, it says, given that S is 25,000, complete the table in your answer booklet. So let's move to our answer booklet. Here it is. Okay, we start off. It says input S. So I'm going to write 25,000. Then I'm going to move to another line for T. T is zero. Move to another line. R is S, whatever S is, take away 8,000, so it's going to be 25,000, subtract 8,000, which is 17,000. Then we go to the next one. Is R um, bigger than zero? Well, yes, it is. And if it is, then we write down T is 0 0.2 times R. So T is 0 0.2 times 17,000, which is 3,400, and we let that be our new T. So 3,400, okay? Then we let R be whatever it was before, subtract 10,000. So R is going to be 17,000, take away 10,000, which is 7,000. And we answer the question, is R uh, bigger than zero? Well, yes, it is. So we move to the next line. We let T now be whatever it was before, plus um, 0.15 times R. So T is going to be 3,400 plus um, whatever R is, 7,000 times by 0 0.15, and that's going to be 4,450. And then we're going to let R be whatever it was before, subtract 12,000, so it's going to be 7,000, subtract 12,000, which is negative 5,000. Um, is R bigger than zero? No. And then you follow this round, and it says output whatever t is. So your output is then 4,450. Okay, and that is following an algorithm through nice and neatly to get yourself five marks. So let's go back here. We've done each step there and we've got our five marks. It says the algorithm is designed to model a possible income tax t on an annual salary s. Write down the amount of income tax paid by a person with an annual salary of £25,000. Well, you put in S is 25000 already and you got out uh, what the income tax was, T, in your output. So simply, the income tax, therefore, is whatever your output was before, which is £4,450. That's just very, very straightforward. It says, find the maximum for part C, annual salary of a person who pays no tax. 
So let's just look back at our picture here. How would you pay no tax? Well, what you would do is look at your flowchart here. Um, if R is bigger than zero, then you start paying some tax and you go down here and you pay tax. So the key bit is here. If R is not bigger than zero, okay, if so, you know, if R, whatever R is, if it's not, then the next place you go down here, you input T, output T, which is currently zero. So you want R to not be um, bigger than zero. Now, for R to not be bigger than zero, um, S would have to be 8,000, okay, or less than 8,000. So your salary would have to be 8,000 pounds or less. So the maximum salary must be 8,000. Max salary is 8,000. Because that 8,000, um, R would be zero, and you would follow the flowchart here, and you would pay what T currently is, which is zero. And it's as simple as that. Okay, next question. Uh, again, pause the video, have a go at the question. I will pause the video at various points. I will show you the question and pause it at the answer booklet page. So um, I would suggest you print these out, a hard copy of these questions and have a go on written paper. So here's the next question. Question, uh, Edexcel D1, June 2007. Try and print this out so you can have a go. Here's the question. Also try and print out the answer uh, booklet, uh, the answer page, which is this. And now, in five seconds, I'll go through this question. You mark your work. So pause the video, have a go, and then mark against mine. Okay, we've got an algorithm. It says, described by this flowchart. Um, it's given that X is 54, Y is 63. Complete the table in the answer booklet to so show the results obtained. Seven marks. So let's go to the answer booklet and start straight away. A is zero, it tells us to start. A is zero. It says input what X and Y. Well, it tells you X is 54 and Y is 63. And then it asks you the question, is X even? And the answer to that is yes. So you put yes. Now you're going to do something. You're going to change things around. You're going to then, uh, because X is even, you're going to divide it by 2. So it would be 27. And then you're going to double what Y is, and it would be 126. And you go back and you're going to answer the question, is X even? The answer this time is no. If no, then you go down this route here. You let A be what it was before plus whatever Y is. So A would be 0 plus 126. As such, then you say, well, you reduce X by 1. So X would be 26. Then you answer the question, is X equal to 0? Well, the answer to that is no. So you go along this route. You divide x by 2 and you double y. So x would then be 13 and y would be double what it was before, 252. And you go back round. Is x even? The answer to that is no, it's not. So you go along this route. You let a be what it was before plus y. So a will be 126, what it was before, plus y, 252, which is 378. Then you let x be 1 less, so x would be 12. And you answer the question, is x 0? Well, no, x is not 0, so you follow this path. So is x 0? No. You half x, 6, and you double y, so y would be 252 doubled, which is 504. And then you follow the loop around. Is x even? Well, this time, x is even, yes. Okay, so straight away you divide it by 2. And then you double y, so y would then be 1,008. And you go back. Is x even this time? No, it's not. So you go along this route. Let y be what it was before, let a be what it was before, plus y. So it would be uh, 1,008 plus 378, which is 1,386. Let y be 1 less, let y be 2. Um, is x 0? Well, no, x is not 0. So you go to here, you divide it by 2, x would be 1, and you double y. So y would therefore be 2016, and you loop back around. Is x even? No, x is not even. 
So you let A be uh, what it was before plus Y, so it would be 1386 plus 2016, it would be 3402, uh, and you let X be 1 less, so it would be 0. Is X equal to 0 this time? Yes, it is. Therefore, you output your value of A. So your output this time would therefore be 3402. Okay, and the question asked you uh, for part B, what does the algorithm achieve? So if I was looking at that, I get an output of 3402, and I started with 54 and 63. So I'm trying to think how they're linked. Just by playing around a bit, you might try and do um, 54 multiplied by 63. So 54 multiplied by 63, and you would get 3402. So therefore, the algorithm works out the product, works out product, the multiplication that is, of whatever x and y is you input into it. And you're done. That is actually um, uh, got a special name to it, that algorithm. That algorithm is something you should have seen if you had uh, worked through the exercises in the book, and it's called the Russian Peasant's Algorithm or the Egyptian multiplication algorithm. Okay, so you would have seen that algorithm if you had worked through the book. Okay, I hope you found the following video useful in your, uh, in your work on Decision 1 Maths and your past paper revision. Thank you for watching.